Um, but I think those are the best arguments for inferring design, which has nothing to do with inferring God. In fact, they purposely say that that's not what they're trying to infer, although it's pretty obvious they are. Um, but still, in terms of what's the best arguments for God herself, I guess um, it, would, it would just be that it does look like the universe is designed. And in fact, let's just say it. It is designed. It's a kind of a jury-rigged, bottom-up designer, but that is a kind of design. So when people intuitively say, you know, it just looks designed, why don't we just say, well, yeah, that's right, because it is. In a way, not a top-down intelligent designer, a bottom-up tinkerer designer. Design nonetheless, so the inference in a way is correct. I think it's interesting. Evolutionists argue against design using arguments they designed. <laughs> think about that one. Um, this is the book he's referring to, Michael Behe's book, Darwin's Black Box. Excellent book. Uh, showing how complex living systems cannot evolve piece by piece. There are too many interconnecting parts that depend on each other. He uses the illustration of a mouse trap with five basic parts. You have to have at least those five parts. You remove any more, it ceases to function. Your car has thousands of parts. Some it can live without or run without. Some it simply cannot run without. The hair on the bacteria, for instance, has a little tiny motor that attaches to the, the bacteria that allows that thing to swim around. That motor is so tiny, eight million of them would fit on the cross section of a human hair the motor turns 100,000 RPM forwards or backwards. Now, if you want to believe that happened by chance, you're welcome to believe that, but that's an incredibly complex little motor and really micro-miniaturized. Anybody who's done any work with computers knows the smaller you try to make it, the more problems you start to have, and that's why the cost goes up for a laptop instead of a desktop. So, no, I think there's evidence of design every place, even down to the micro level. Okay, dinosaurs. What are your opinion on dinosaurs, Dr. Hoven, and where do they fall into the creation versus evolution argument? That happens to be my favorite topic. I have Dinosaur Adventure Land. <laughs> uh, my website is Dr. Dino. My phone number is 479 Dino. Uh, <laughs> I have dinosaurs on my tie. Uh, I'm sick and tired of the evolutionists using dinosaurs to teach kids that they lived millions of years ago. The fact of the matter is that they were called dragons all through history. The word dinosaur was just made up in 1841. These creatures have always lived with man. There are thousands and thousands of legends and cave drawings and artwork and uh, 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 video number three on the table back there covers all that. Uh, dinosaurs have lived with man all through history. They simply called them dragons. The Bible says before the flood came, the people lived to be 900 years old. Well, reptiles never stop growing. Even today, they don't stop growing. Most species don't. So in the pre-flood conditions, the reptiles would grow to be gigantic. Uh, they were dinosaurs living with Adam and Eve. Then Noah took them on the ark probably babies, just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. And after the flood, people killed them. And all through history, there are stories of people killing dragons. And there could be a few still alive today. There have been thousands of sightings like Loch Ness Monster, Lake Champlain Monster, a dead one washed up on the beach in California, 1925, a dead plesiosaur. Fish fishermen watched it get killed. There are pictures on my website, and I have them here, but I don't have time to get them up because uh, I have 7,000 slides. So if you'd start asking the questions in the same order that I have the answer, <laughs> it'd be a lot faster. Okay. Will do. <laughs> we need to have live internet and just Google ready to go. Okay, there's my answer. <laughs> why, why do you suppose fish died in the flood? How do you explain that? All these ocean swimming dinosaurs died in the flood? Just all of a sudden couldn't swim? Are we supposed to believe this? Where in the geological record have you ever seen a dinosaur and a human together? You never have. This is an empirical test. This young lady is shaking her head. Yes, you have seen a dinosaur and a human together? Good. Come see me later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this would be a falsifiable test of evolution. If you could actually find a dinosaur or a trilobite or whatever and a, and a hominid uh, fossil in the same bed, that would do it. That would be a huge point against evolutionary theory. It has never been found. Hey, Dr. Shermer, regarding bird evolution, is there any living or fossil evidence that a leg became a wing and a scale became a feather? 
Yeah, good question. Um, there's actually a fair amount of good evidence now for the evolution of birds from dinosaurs and the transition from scales to feathers and the transition from uh, walking limbs to flying limbs. It operates in principle with the slide I put up with the each part has a particular function that serves some other purpose that in the end got co-opted for a different purpose. And the wing is a classic example, almost surely was once a thermodynamic regulator, a heat regulator, which then gets co-opted to use for something else later. Therefore, a half a wing has some purpose. In terms of the fossil record, it's pretty good now. We actually have quite a few transitional fossils from dinosaurs to birds. And there's a number of paleontologists that think today the, birds are, the dinosaurs are still living, not as dragons in the Bible. By the way, where are the unicorns that are referred to in the Bible? Where, where are those, either in the fossil record or today? I'd like to see one of those. Another one of those interesting tests that continues to get failed. So uh, in terms of the paleontological record, it's pretty good. We have to remember that most beasties that die get eaten. They don't fossilize, hardly any fossilize. So it's an amazing fact that we have so many fossils that we do. It's an embarrassment of riches. Okay, uh, I disagree strongly. Every one of the so-called evidences for dinosaurs turning to birds are, are, have been proven wrong. Archaeoraptor was listed as oh, ev proof for evolution, the missing link. <clears throat> National Geographic, breaking news, we found the missing link. A couple of months later, uh, oops, we got fooled. <clears throat> Some Chinese guy glued a tail, glued a, a bird tail on a reptile, and sold it for $80,000, and the Smithsonian bought it. There's a Chinese smuggler who brought it in. A great embarrassment to modern paleontology from USA Today. We can go all day about that. The tale was added by an entrepreneurial Chinese farmer. <laughs> yep. Uh, which one you want to talk about? Archaeoraptor? Uh, it, 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 the, the little dino fuzz, they call it. We got plenty of stuff on that. Video number four, folks. You need that one. Uh, this dino fuzz is not dino fuzz at all. It's just simply a, a, simply a chemical reaction that takes place as it things fossilize, and it's been proven over and over. There's considerable, considerable body of evidence that these fossil traces known as dinofuzz have nothing to do with feathers, Alan Fiducia writes, and he believes in evolution. So uh, you're mistaken about that. Thank you. Question for Dr. Hoven. How do you account for most people's belief that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, carbon dating, radioactive dating, potassium argon dating? Um, go ahead and put the screen up there while I've got it here. This is the California's Nessie washed up on the beach. California, I told you about earlier, had a neck 20 feet long. Everybody said it was a plesiosaur right up here in California. Uh, as far as carbon dating, uh, that's anybody who believes carbon dating works doesn't understand the problems associated with it. And it's not true to say the majority of people believe in evolution or believe the Earth is billions of years old. The majority of Americans do not believe the Earth is billions of years old. As far as carbon dating, when it was first invented in 1947 to 53, Willard Libby invented it at the University of Chicago, got a Nobel Prize for it, and then moved to Stanford. In 1949, the lower leg of a mammoth, carbon dated 15,000 years old, but the skin was 21,000 from the same animal. Talk about a slow birth. <laughs> 1963, living mollusk shells dated 2,300 years old. It's not getting any better. That's 14 years of practice with carbon dating. 1970, they said if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. 1971, freshly killed seal dated 1,300 years old. 1975, one part of a mammoth is 40,000 years old, another part is 26,000. It's not working. 1981, it's not working. It, ha it has never worked. 1984, living snail.